In this tutorial, you'll learn how to take any ordinary cellular telephone camera footage, create a vintage film-like art texture using Krita, which can later be used as an overlay for videos in Blender. I'll cover the entire process of creating the texture step by step, including setting up the Krita canvas, selecting appropriate brushes, and mixing colors to achieve the desired effect. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a beautiful film texture that you can use over and over again to enhance the visual appeal of your videos. So let's get started and bring that vintage look to life. With the new Blender project open, select the video editing item under New File on the splash screen. Click in the track area. You can hit Shift A to add a new video strip under Movie. You can also drag files from a file browser on your computer. I'll go ahead and drag some footage into this project. Next, make any of the cuts that you may normally make while editing video. In this example, I want just a second of each clip, so I'm trimming these down to make them fit appropriately. I won't go in depth on using the video editor within Blender, but there are many other great videos online that demonstrate how to use it. With all of the cuts out of the way, one thing at this point that may be important is to change the aspect ratio of our project. An easy way to do this in Blender is to select the Y property, add that to the X field, then multiply that by 4 and divide by 3 for a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. After changing the aspect ratio, I've noticed that some of my footage needs to be moved around. You can easily move strips by clicking on them to select them in the track area and then moving them with the G key constraining to the X or Y axis by hitting the X or Y key after G. Once everything's lined up how I'd like it, I'm ready to do some color grading. I am by no means an expert at color grading, but it's very easy to add color correction to each strip within Blender from the modifiers tab on the right. I recommend watching some videos about color grading and also playing around with some different values here until you find something you like. The Blender Sequence Editor also allows you to leverage the histogram display if you like to use that for color grading purposes. And next I'd like to emulate the look of Film Burn. To achieve this, I use a transition between two colors. The colors I'm going to use are orange and white. The transition I'll be using between these two colors is a wipe. Bearing in mind the desired look for my footage, I'm going to make this transition about four or five frames. So I'll set this one to a yellowish color, now that I've got it the right size. And maybe make that just a little bit more orange. Next, I'll hit Shift D to duplicate this strip then hold the Y key to keep it on the Y axis of the tracks panel. After moving this new color strip up one slot, I'll change its color to white. Now selecting the orange then white strip, I can hit Shift A to add a new transition and select wipe. If I need to swap the order of these colors, I can change the direction from out to in. Now we can see that the orange is fading to the top. To maximize the gradient, I'll change the blur width to one. You can also adjust the angle of the wipe, which for this, I'll add just a little bit of an angle. Next, I'll select both color strips and hit the H key to hide those. This will mute both strips and I can work solely with the wipe. As a finishing touch for this film burn, I'll change the blend mode to color burn. Once I've created the desired effect, I can easily duplicate these three strips, the colors and the wipe, and reuse them across the project. I'll do that now. I'll now open Krita and design my film texture. So we'll create a new document, we'll use custom document from the left, and I'll set this to an appropriate width and height. So 1080 by 1920 is HD video, 
But let's take that 1080 and make that 10 frames. So times 10. And then again, remember our width is actually 1440 since we're working in 4.3. I'll click Create. And we can see a very long document is created. Next, I'll choose an appropriate brush to start making some texture for my film. The spine's texture works really well to emulate the look of old film. It may look somewhat dried up on the edges. But this size is going to work really well. Maybe it's something more like 300 pixels. With my brush sized, I'm going to select a color, something kind of yellow or orangish. This light orange, almost sand color, will work really well for me. Using the middle mouse wheel to grab and move to the top of the document, I'll just start painting in this texture. I'm going to paint it on each side of the document, from top to bottom. I won't worry about being super even with this, but I do want it to be somewhat consistent. To add some more visual variance, I'm going to add a brownish color. So we'll make this a bit more red, a little darker. Something like that should work nicely. So I'll add in this secondary color. Now at the moment, this is looking pretty dramatic. I definitely don't want this overlaid on my video. So the next thing I'll we'll need to do is move this color around a little bit on the canvas. I'll change my brush to a rake and look for the blender rake. This is the one that we want. So with the blender rake tool, make sure your width is appropriate. I'm gonna undo that stroke and then just change my width to something a little bit wider. How about 150 pixels? Now working again from top to bottom, I can just sort of streak this color around. Again, this doesn't have to be perfectly uniform, but you want it to be somewhat consistent. After working up and down each side of the canvas, make sure things look fairly consistent. Next, I want to lighten these colors just a little bit. So I'll go to Filter, Adjust, and Levels. From the Levels menu, I want to adjust the output levels to bring the lower stop lighter. This will compress my colors into the lighter range. To me, these colors look a little bit more like aged film than what I had previously, so I'll click OK. Next, I'd like to add some text. Oftentimes, you'll see some text on the edge of film stock, so let's write some text. I'm using Roboto Mono, however you can use any monospace font and it should look pretty nice. Next, you'll definitely want to increase the font size. I'd also like to change the color of this. Let's choose one of the colors that it suggests. Lastly, I want to change the letter spacing. Giving a little more space between the letters will make this look more realistic. Something like 10 will work for me. Finally, if I move outside one of the corners of the text item and hold control while clicking, I can rotate this item 90 degrees. Then I'll simply move the text item to be on the left side of my texture. Finally, I'll make sure that everything is in view with the text. With the text in place, I'm ready to start placing some dust and hair on the film. For this, I'll want to select a different brush and probably use a color like black. I've found that Pencil 2 works really well for drawing on hair. We need to adjust the brush size to something between 1 and 2 pixels. Making some test strokes, I can see if I need to adjust the size of this brush. Using the middle mouse wheel to click and move down the canvas, I'll just start adding more hairs. 
Don't add too many hairs, as it will make the film look very aged. Next, we can add some dust with some of the splatter brushes available within Krita. Play around with different brushes and different sizes to get the effect that you'd like. You can also adjust the opacity. If you focus on making your canvas look like a stained piece of paper, it'll probably turn out quite nice. With your texture complete, go to File and click Export. From here, choose the appropriate location to export your file, usually where your video project is being worked on. Give it a name that you'll remember. And then change the format to JPEG. Click Save to save your texture. Back in Blender, we can now add our texture to our project. Go to the beginning of the project and hit Shift A to add a new image or image sequence. Select your image file and move it to the top track of the project. You'll notice that it's very narrow and only taking up the center of the view. Blender automatically scales the image to fit within our project, so we'll need to change the X and Y scale both to 1. With our strip still selected, hit the G key once more and Y to constrain to the Y axis. Keep moving your cursor down until you reach the top of the image. Hit Enter once you get to the top. Now change the blend mode from Alpha Over to Color Burn. Next, we need to animate this texture. Starting again from the beginning of the project, we'll create a new keyframe for the Y position of this image. The round button next to the Y value will allow you to add a new keyframe. Next, move ahead about 20 frames or so on the timeline. Hit G and Y once more to move the texture all the way to the bottom. Once you've reached the bottom of the texture, hit Enter. Create a new keyframe at this value and we can see that the texture moves. There are a few issues we need to address though. Currently, the texture only moves for 20 frames and stops. You can see this on the graph view within Blender. We're also using Bezier interpolation when we should probably use linear. With all the keyframes selected in the graph view, hit T to change the interpolation from Bezier to Linear. Zooming into the graph a bit more, we can see that this is only happening one time, but we want this to repeat, so select Modifiers and choose Cycles. This will repeat our animation for as long as our video is. If we hit play now, we can see that our film texture moves over our video for the entirety of the project. One last edit to make is to change our frame rate. While we don't want to directly influence the frame rate of this, we would like it to look more like old film, which had a lower frame rate than 30 frames per second. To do this, I'll select all of the strips in the timeline and hit Ctrl G to group them into a meta strip. I'm going to move this meta strip down to the bottom track just to clean things up. So G and Y, and then just move down to the bottom. Now, what we need to do is open the video section of the right parameters. From here, we can add a strobe effect. The strobe effect will cause frame skipping. If your project is set to 30 frames per second and you enter a value of 2 here, it will essentially make the video play at 15 frames per second. While most older handheld footage was 18 frames per second, so let's use some math to divide 30 by 18 
to get our strobe value. Something else we may want to do is mess with the brightness of our strip. We can add some noise to the brightness to add a little bit of flicker, as if this were playing on a projector. I'll set a keyframe at the first frame of the project, and then add a noise modifier from the graph menu. If I zoom in, you can see that the noise I've generated is quite small. What we'd like to do is increase the strength of this noise so that it's more apparent in our playback. For my project, I found a strength of 20 and a scale of 3 for the noise to work quite well. Since we added this modification after grouping our strip, we will need to once again create a group from this single strip. Select the meta strip, hit Ctrl G to put that meta strip into another meta strip, and then once again under the strip properties and video, enter 30 divided by 18. And that's it, our film look is complete. From here, there are some other things we could do if we'd like to. You could take this project back into Blender's compositor, add some noise, maybe some lens distortion, and some other artistic effects including more color grading. The sky's the limit. Let me know what you create with this tutorial in the comments below. I look forward to seeing your unique projects.